and a very warm welcome to NTA Nationwide. My name is Juma Yusuf. President Mohamed Buhari has vowed to do whatever it takes within his powers towards ensuring that the unity of Nigeria remains sacrosanct. The president stated this while granting audience to the Ofo of Umofo Kingdom in Imo State, Eze Abdul Fattah Chimeze Emetuma, on a goodwill visit. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has details. The Ofo of Umu Ofo Kingdom, accompanied by religious leaders and other members of his council, was in the State House to express formal appreciation to President Muhammad Buhari for demonstrating genuine love for Nigeria and Nigerians through purposeful leadership in the last three years. The President thanked the monarch for not only identifying with the progress made so far by his administration in moving the nation forward, but also presenting a well thought out recommendations on engendering national unity. And on that, he said, the federal government is ready to contend with anyone who tries to undermine the peace and unity of Nigeria. I'm very pleased that uh, you identified with this patriotism and nationalism and I assure you that uh, this administration will do its best at all times to make sure that uh, your objectives are understood and as much as possible made our own contribution to meet them. Anybody to try to joke with the unity of this country, he has a problem as long as we are alive. President Buhari also used the opportunity to restate the commitment of his administration to a greater Nigeria. Our single objective is how to make Nigeria better as a country. Um, we will never get tired with this effort. Eze Abdul Fattah Chimeze Emetuma applauded President Buhari for faithfully executing the Change Nigeria project for sustainable growth and development of the economy. Yes, and sister. From that, we have a mission for Nigeria. We have fought for the unity of this nation. And its enemies know very well that you won't tolerate anything that would affect its unity and our collective existence. You have indeed made remarkable progress in strategic areas, and security is one of them. The symbols like Boko Haram and other anarchists have tested the bitter pills. In agriculture, you have made impact. Today, locally produced rice has outnumbered the imported ones. Our critical infrastructure, especially federal roads across the nation, have improved and are still improving. Next four years, we will serve for more improvement and consolidation, inshallah. We call upon Almighty God to continue to subguide you in your quest to make Nigeria better for this generation and generation yet unborn. The Ofo of Umofo also used the forum to preach peace amongst Nigerians, irrespective of their differences, saying this is critical for peace and prosperity in the country as no one harms what he or she loves. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Observers of the nation's social and economic evolution have hinted that the Federal High Court recent judgment validating President Buhari's executive order on the seizure of assets linked to corruption is likely to serve as an impetus for the fight against corruption. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okeyu in this report puts the court's judgment in perspective. This is another instance in which lawyers and social commentators have always suggested the testing of the law wherever any policy is regarded contentious instead of revolting. President Muhammad Buhari had on the 5th of July 2018 issued a presidential executive order now known as Executive Order 6 providing for the interim seizure of assets linked to ongoing criminal trials and investigations. Two private lawyers, Ikenga Ugochinyere and Kenneth Udeze, shortly after instituted a suit before the Federal High Court in Abuja, challenging the validity of the order. Now Justice Ijoma Ojoku, before whom the case was instituted, has affirmed that the President has the constitutional powers to issue executive orders as long as it does not encroach 
into the principles of separation of powers. Justice Ojoko ruled that the presidential executive order was issued as a policy directive for the implementation of provisions of existing laws, adding that it also recognized the right of every citizen to approach the court for redress if aggrieved by the enforcement of the order. This ruling now paves the way for the full implementation of Executive Order 6 as part of the fight against corruption. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NTN News. The Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt has asked the federal government, Federal Ministry of Finance and Debt Management Office to present details of over $2 billion euro bond loan requested by the ministry for consideration. The committee says its request for detailed explanation on the sum to be borrowed from international capital market and its significance to the running of the economy has become imperative with a view to appropriate channeling of the loan for functional development of the people. John Yakuk has details. The Senate in July this year received the request from the Minister of Finance asking for the approval of the sum to enable it finance the deficit in the 2018 budget. During the defense, representatives of the Ministry and Debt Management Office were asked to give details of collateral, interest rates and other conditionalities for the loan. I look at the document you have submitted here. I expected to see which projects that this money is going to be used if it's borrowing. So you have to tell us what are the risk analysis you have taken and what is the collateral of the China's uh, facilities we have taken. On the utilization of funds or uh, the uh, loans that they are taking, uh, please the office of the accountant general of the Federation will be in a better state to answer this. Chairman Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt, Shehusani, raised concern over rising debt profile of the country and its future. He therefore urged the Director Home Finance in the Ministry and Director Portfolio Management Debt Management Office to liaise with their principals as soon as possible and furnish the committee with relevant information to enable it concludes its work. Let us borrow in such a way that the next generation, when they come, when they open the file, they will see figures, and they, when they go outside, they will see structures that justifies these figures. The outcome of the committee will be presented at the Senate plenary for approval. From the National Assembly, John Yaku, NTA News. And in another development, deficiency of the competent official reporters in various government establishments in the country will soon be fully addressed. Clark to the National Assembly in a message to the 2017-2018 HND matriculation of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies expressed the hope that graduates of the institute in official reporting will have the capacity to change the narrative. National Assembly correspondent Kenem Nani reports. The matriculation placed emphasis on efforts by the Institute to develop capacity of official reporters to promote professionalism and efficiency in legislative practice in line with global standards. Breaking new grounds and I think it's something that would um, positively contribute to the development um, of the bureaucracy civil service in this country. Represented by Director of Procurement Clark to the National Assembly, challenged the matriculants to use their opportunity to fulfill the dreams of many Nigerians towards effective service delivery in various democratic institutions in Nigeria. The course was designed to equip the students with the modern skills in keeping records in parliamentary activities and other areas of service for the sustenance of democracy and good governance. People that cover parliamentary activities, even the courts, they cover special committees. These are people that should document for purpose of future references. We are being trained to move away from uh, the analog system to the ICT or digital way, let me say that. For example, like the short hand, I've done short hand before, but I'm seeing it in a new way. I've done typing before, I'm seeing it in a new way. There's this professional um, touch 
going to make a great impact because after a year, we are qualified to work in any parliament of the world. In National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies is the first institute in Nigeria to be accredited to offer official reporting as a course of study in the HND programs. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. The National Defense College has been urged to undertake academic research that will expand professional expertise in the study of policy options and security strategies to meet the demands of 21st century security operation. Governor Ben Ayade stated this when Team 4, participants of, national, of the National Defense College, Nigeria, visited him in Government House, Calabar. Yes of 31 officers from the National Defense College comprising 17 participants were in Calabar for a study tour hinged on the theme Management and National Security, Cross River State in Perspective. Yavno Ayade, who decried the impact of the crisis in southern Cameroon on the state, noted that there is influx of illegal immigrants which has aggravated insecurity in the state as well as transborder crimes. He urged the participants to come up with strategic framework that will help deal with the current situation. You must look aggressively on the external influence of the armed rebellion by the Amazonian Republic. Team leader Brigadier General Alade Adediba lauded Cross River State Government for efforts in youth development and assured that the team will bring an action plan that will ensure national security. The youth focus program so that Grassland State will remain a peaceful state and of course Nigeria at large. The National Defense College was established in 1992 as the highest military institution for training of senior military officers in Nigeria. In Calabar, Uduak Etham, NTA News. Thank you, Uduak. Meanwhile, the federal government is taking more proactive steps in advancing the defense sector, especially with the review of the Nigerian Begin Act, improved pension administration, and a robust defense health insurance scheme. Minister of Defense Mansur Ang Ali ruled this at a press briefing to signal the 2019 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration in Abuja. Defense correspondent Olaji Debelu has details. <laughs> The Nigerian Armed Forces, renowned for defending the nation's territorial integrity, has continued to degrade insurgency and other forms of security challenges in the country. It is in appreciation of the ultimate prize and gallantry of the Armed Forces that January 15th is set aside annually as Armed Forces Remembrance Day, chosen to signify the end of the Nigerian Civil War in January 1970. In 2016, I endorse the collaboration to Nigerian Legion and the private sector driven national personnel asset acquisition scheme, NAPS. The collaboration has pro uh, programmed in housing, agriculture, provision of pre medical services, and acquisition, transportation, education, and humanitarian services. All these are in bid to improve the welfare of the living condition of our veterans and their families. The federal government, through the Ministry of Defense, says it will continue to formulate and implement policies that will promote the growth and development of the defense sector. From the National Defense College in Abuja, Olajide Bello, NTA News. The air tax force of Operation Lafayette Dole has decimated a Boko Haram terrorist training camp and also destroyed a Boko Haram vehicle near Tumburego in Borno State. The Nigerian Air Force has the Nigerian Air Force. A statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Commando Ibukunle Daramola, indicates that the attack on the heels of credible intelligence reports that several structures camouflaged on the thick vegetation in the settlement were being used to harbor and train Boko Haram terrorist fighters. The Nigerian Air Force worked in synergy with ground forces, saying it will continue to sustain the momentum of operations with a view to destroying remnants of the Boko Haram terrorists on the fringes of Lake Chad and other areas in northern Borno. The Nigerian Air Force has commenced a fire 
day free medical outreach for flood victims at the internally displaced persons camp Ibogiri Yenogua Bios State. Demipre O'Hare reports that the program was flagged off by the chief of air staff represented by AVM Napoleon Binka Bali, Air Officer Commanding Mobility Command Yenogua. The medical outreach program, an initiative of the chief of air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, is part of the Nigerian Air Force humanitarian effort to alleviate the plight of the recent flood victims. Declaring the program open, the chief of air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, represented by Air Vice Marshal Napoleon Bin Kap Bali, Air Officer Commandant, said the medical outreach is to support what the Biasa State Government and the National Emergency Management Agency are doing to mitigate the impact of the flood in the state. If there is still need for us to continue, then I will definitely communicate with the chief of air staff, and I'm sure you will give the approval for the additional number of days. The idea is to make sure we have a reasonable number of people in this camp that will be well treated, just to make sure at least they, they improve their health uh, condition and let them also know their health status. The medical team leader, group captain Azubuke Chukuka, who conducted the Air Vice Marshal and other dignitaries around the camp, said the medical services provided include the warming of children, distribution of mosquito nets and eyeglasses, medical checkups, why patients with surgical cases will be operated upon. The beneficiaries, representative of the Biasa State Commissioner for Health and the Biasa State Emergency Management Agency, expressed gratitude to the Nigerian Air Force for the kind gesture, noting that the effort will bring relief to the people who have lost their property and homes to the flood. The medical outreach taking place at Igbogene in Bayasa State is expected to cater for the health needs of about 4,000 persons with minor health issues and surgical cases. In Yenagua, Timinopoe, or here, NTA News. The mother of Leah Sharibu, the only Dapchi girl, school girl still in captivity, has appealed to her abductors to be compassionate and release her unharmed. The appeal was contained in a video exclusively obtained by NTA. It will be recalled that Leah Sharibu and one hundred and eight or nine other girls were abducted from their schools in Dapchi in February 19 this year. While most of the girls have been released, Leah has remained in captivity and her abductors have, been threatened, have threatened to kill her. Similarly, relatives to three female aid workers who were abducted in March this year have pleaded for their release. Alice Loksha was working with the International Committee of the Red Cross in Kal Karan Kalabalgi when she was abducted, while Amin Aliman was working with UNICEF at the time of her abduction. Gideon Loksha, Alice's younger brother, and Yak. Kachi Liman, Amina's mother, have both pleaded for their release. The third abducted lady, Safura Hussein Ahmed, was killed by abductors last month. Nigeria is asking the International Monetary Fund and World Bank to help curb illicit financial flow from international oil companies. Ministers of Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed, while speaking on the sidelines of the ongoing annual meeting in Nusa, Nusra Dua Bali also spoke on the global preparedness to mitigating the effects of national, natural disasters. Let's join f finance and economy correspondent Leah Katung Baban today for the rest of the story. South Africa's former president Thabo Mbeki made a disturbing disclosure recently in Abuja. A staggering $80 billion is being peddled out of Africa annually through illicit financial flows. This concern is largely around international companies operating in countries like Nigeria, South Africa and Angola that are major commodity exporters and top on the economic ladder of sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria has been meeting with the Commonwealth and G24 in Bali on economic issues and Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed say part of the request from Nigeria is a concerted effort to cut tax evasion and avoidance by most especially large oil companies as the economy is still being run largely on revenue from oil. We ask for them to look at how we can uh, prevent transfer pricing, how we can stop the flows that, that go out of that sector, because these are revenues that we will use to enhance our, our development. 
The government has in recent time put in place strategies to boost the nation's tax collection to appreciating ratio against the GDP. Minister Zainab said global approach to preparations for natural disasters was also discussed in closed-door sessions. All of us as uh, countries that are predisposed have to be prepared to be able to uh, act very quickly and also we have to be ready to provide support to our neighbors and colleagues, uh, other countries that have such uh, disasters. The Nigerian delegation has been assuring investors in body of high returns available for them in the country. I'm Leah Katingbaba today, NTA News. For Nigeria to meet the Sustainable Development Goal target of zero hunger and efficient school feeding program, Nigerians must step up the consumption of egg per day that will also boost the economy. This is the submission of the National President of the Poultry Association of Nigeria, Ezekiel Ibrahim, at a press briefing on the World Egg Day in Abuja. Ahmed Unders Ahmed now reports. For every stage in life, egg is not just necessary but a vital proteinous food supplement that ensures healthy growth, as new research shows that there is no health disorder in the consumption irrespective of age. Apart from the nutritional value of eggs, the industry is greatly contributing to the nation's diversified economy. To this effect, the association is soliciting that all IDPs, peacekeeping personnel, children under the school feeding program should be placed on weekly consumption of quality eggs to enhance their growth and capability to work better. The economy of eggs in Nigeria is enormous. As an egg a day for 50% of the Nigerian population will produce a daily economic value of 1.7 billion naira. Annual revenue from egg sales will be 620 billion naira annually if every Nigerian will take an egg a day. Every second Friday of October is set aside as Global Egg Day to create awareness on the consumption of eggs and its nutritional value to humanity. Ahmed Unders Ahmed. NT News. Our first port of call is Lagos and Michael is standing by. Good to see you, Michael. Thanks for joining us in Lagos. The Lagos State Government has honored 888 public servants who have served meritoriously in various capacities with long service awards. The awards were presented by the Lagos State Governor, Akim Miambodi, who was represented by the Deputy Governor, Thomas Ogbeteri has details. The Lagos State Governor, Akimumi Ambode, was represented at the occasion by his deputy, Dr. Idiot Adebule. It was the 2018 Long Service Merit Award organized to honor beneficiaries who qualified not only on the basis of long years spent in the civil service, but also for their unblemished character, high sense of commitment to duty, loyalty, and hard work. Thanks, welfare and well-being has continued to receive the priority attention that it deserves. This is evident by the various welfare programs that are meant to enhance the socio-economic conditions of workers and the provision of facilities that have continued to make the work environment safe and conducive. The Lagos State Head of Service for Lashada Adeso and some recipients of Award noted that the Lagos State Public Service has made some remarkable strides in the area of capacity development, which have impacted on the quality of service delivery. Lagos State Government is saying thank you to them. They have served conscientiously for over 30 years. And I feel it's a real privilege that the Lagos State Government has given me fit to recognize me for my humble contribution to the service of. Uh, uh, humanity. This is an encouragement to all civil servants, public servants in Lagos State. They explained that the deployment and application of information communication technology has ensured a more efficient, effective, and proactive public service. In Lagos, Thomas Ogbetere, NTA News. Extensive research on various species of plants in Nigeria, it has been observed, can help boost the nation's health and economic sectors. Professor James Daly Olowokudejo stated this while delivering an inaugural lecture titled 
the enigmatic kingdom of plants, their power to stimulate, intoxicate, and alter consciousness, their power to mail, kill, and cure. Hingino John Adams reports on the lecture which held at the University of Lagos. Research by botanists in Nigeria indicates that the plant kingdom in the nation is endowed with thousands of endemic species. How these plants can add value to national development was what led Professor James Dele Oluokudejo on a 35-year research journey that produced amazing findings. Part of his discoveries is that plants have inexplicable powers which provide them the ability to give and take life depending on usage. If a major disease were to kill off all or most of the grain organisms on land, in the oceans and lakes, all animals, including us, will starve and suffocate within 11 years. This is the time estimated for all the oxygen to be completely used up on Earth. Some members of the academia say studies like this should be supported by government and other key players. We can exploit medicinal plants to form a very thriving in industry. And um, that can supplement the, you know, the Western medicine that we use. Plants can be used as a cure, it can be used as a killer, it can be used to men, it can be used to, as food to sustain life. They however expressed optimism that the result of the findings will challenge others in various fields to go into profitable studies. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. The Garden City is where we go next from here and Ogechi Paul is standing by for report from that zone. Hello, Ogechi. Yeah, thank you, Michael, and a warm welcome to Port Harcourt. Senator representing Rivers Southeast Senatorial District, Magnus Ngayabe, has called on aggrieved APC members of River State to remain resolute and committed to the party and President Muhammad Buhari's government assuring them that every untoward development in the party will be resolved. So that I said this at an APC rally in Port Harcourt. Usinati Silvanos Abraham has details. Senator Abe was speaking at a rally in Port Harcourt, where the over 148,000 APC members who participated in the September 30th direct primaries gathered to honor him for his emergence as the governorship candidate after reverse APC direct primaries conducted in the 23 local government areas of River State. Senator Abe commended their resilience and called on them to remain resolute while trusting in God for justice. We stand on the direct primaries and we want to use this opportunity to appeal to the National Working Committee to stand by the will of the people. Some APC stalwarts in the state commended Senator Abe's courage and confidence in the rule of law, urging the party at the national office to listen to the voice of reason. Abe's supporters pledged to be on the side of justice and fairness, promising to mobilize for President Buhari come 2019. In Port Harcourt, Osinachi Silvanus NTA News. In the meantime, the Ojukaye Flag Amakri led All Progressives Congress, APC, has enjoined its teaming supporters not to be dismayed by the judgment of a Port Harcourt High Court, which nullified the party congresses alongside the outcomes of recent party primaries held in River State. State Public Secretary Chris Feinborn, who gave the assurance that the news briefing in Port Harcourt said the party has directed its legal team to appeal the judgment. Kingsley Majuri reports. The judgment, Chris Feinbaum said, did not come to the party as a surprise arising from the alleged romance between Senator Magnus Abe led faction of the party and the state government. Despite aspects of the matter which are already before the Court of Appeal and the Nigerian Supreme Court, the lower court went ahead to decide on a matter that is being challenged at higher cost of the land. Indeed, our legal team is already finalizing the paperwork to file an appeal on today's judgment and stay of execution. The party said the APC under Flagger Macri is protected by an order of perpetual injunction granted by an Abuja High Court. 
presided over by Justice A. O. Musa, restraining the national leadership of the party or any institution from tampering with the decisions of the state executive. It is also important to emphasize that the entire 319 wards and 23 LGS escorts of the party are by implication protected against the ruling by any court of coordinate jurisdiction. The party further argued that Justice Wogu's judgment couldn't have invalidated the party's primaries which were conducted by representatives of the national officers of the party in Port Harcourt. Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. Away from politics, hundreds of households have been displaced by raging floods with farmlands and crops worth millions of naira destroyed in Egiland, Obaebe Mantone, Council area of River State. Emmanuel Lena reports that one of the worst hit is Obogu community as displaced residents call for government intervention to hem their plight. Situated a few kilometers from the Orashi River, a tributary of River Niger, with adjoining creeks and swamps close to the communities, hundreds of households, farmlands and crops in the big land have been destroyed by the ravaging flood, as most of the residents now take refuge in upland neighboring communities. Some of the communities include Obogu, Obagi and Ohailielu. Most residents of the communities, especially the women folk whose sources of livelihood have been destroyed, marched in protests around the community, decrying the attitude of government, relevant agencies and oil companies to their plight. Our house has collapsed. Even our children doesn't go to school anymore. Water even to drink is, is difficult. The water has become a pack away. I don't know where to live. My house has broken down beyond the destruction to farmlands, those involved in other forms of businesses have been displaced and abandoned to the elements. While reflecting on the impact and negative effect of the 2012 flood on the communities, they called for the dredging of the Orashi River and construction of standard drainages as long-term measures to contain the recurring experience. I am pleading to the federal government, state and local, to come to, to our aids, one, by coming to dredge the Orash River. From Ogbogu community in Ogba, Egbema, Ndoni Little Government area, I'm Emmanuel Lene, MTA News. Well, that's a bit from here. Nationwide returns after the break. Stay on the line. Welcome back to NTA Nationwide. The federal government has promised to, maintain, to remain firm and focused at enforcing the Treasury single account, which, is, which it says is no longer optional for accountability and sustainable feature of the country. President Mohamed Buhari made the promises while receiving in audience the national executive members of the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. Uh, unless uh, we know what gets in, how can we account for what gets out? Mm -hmm. So TSA makes a lot of sense. That's why this administration insisted that it has to uh, come into being, that any revenue must go through and uh, therefore it can be traced how it goes out. I think that's the beginning of accountability. <laughs> the implementation of Treasury single account and other economic policies have provided greater visibility of government revenue and cash flows. This government has instilled fiscal discipline in the system by plugging loopholes for leakages. We salute the courage of the government in this anti-corruption crusade. It is indeed a Herculean task, but surmountable. We have the confidence that the sincerity and commitment of the government, they all will be won. Similarly, Your Excellency must be appreciated for the success recorded in the fight against insurgents in the country, especially the liberation of many communities in the North is hitherto under the control of the Boko Haram. The tenure of the National Working Committee of the Labour Party has been extended for another term of one year. This was at the party's National Executive Council meeting. Patricia S. Lumba reports. We have decided to 
tenure extension for the members of the National Working Committee of the Labour Party due to have expired on the 11th October 2018 is to enable members to party through the 2019 general election. We are preparing for it. A lot of them have conducted the primaries and we are set to go. And by the end of the world, we will participate in all elections uh, of 2019. We will commence the submission of our forms very soon in the corner with the INEC guideline. The National Executive Council also suspends and declares the positions of some of its National Working Committee members vacant after evaluating the activities of the members as not in line with the party's constitution. They include the seats of the Deputy National Chairman, National Vice Chairman, South South Northeast, and the National Publicity Secretary. Also declared vacant are the offices of the Deputy National Women Leaders, South South and South East and the Assistant Financial Secretary alongside the National Youth Leader in Abuja. Pat Governor Mohamed Badaru Abubakar has commended the stabilizing role being played by the Nigerian Television Authority through its developmental stories from different parts of the country. Receiving the management of NTA Dute, the governor pledged to facilitate the rehabilitation of two community stations in the state. Awal Mohamed Kazori reports. Governor Mohamed Badaru Abubakar said media houses plays a vital role in sustaining Nigeria's democracy. He said NTA being the largest television in Africa had been performing beyond expectation in enlightening the public through its news and programs. I've been following up uh, on the activities of your station and what you send out there to network news is encouraging. So we say thank you. The governor assured of government support to the station so as to address some of its challenges. The general manager, NTA Duse, Abdullahi Garba Burnunkudu, said Jiga State has a lot of issues that needed to be brought to limelight through news and programs. He acknowledged the agricultural revolution, economic empowerment, healthcare delivery, and peaceful coexistence. We want to bring Jigawa to limelight. We want to expose Jigawa at national level. Well, Your Excellency, I'm, it's unfortunate we are constrained. The general manager solicited for moral and financial support so as to move the station forward. The Nigerian Television Authority, Duse, was established 21 years ago. In Duse, Awal Muhammad Kazauri, NTA News. Kano State Government donates to flood victims. Suleiman is our guide for details of this story and orders and reports making the rounds in that zone. Suleiman, take it away. Thank you very much and a warm welcome to Kaduna. Traditional rulers in northern Nigeria have resolved to implement measures that are expected to translate into about 30% increase in school enrollment among children, especially the girl child. They made their resolution at the end of a two-day conference in Kaduna. Abdullah Mohammed has the details. After aggregating suggestions by educationists drawn from diverse disciplines, the traditional rulers, with support from UNICEF and its partners, developed a roadmap with a view to stimulating school enrollment within their area of administration. Each of them took turn to sign the document which concretized their commitment to its dictates. This means that the traditional rulers have pledged to reach out and bring children to school identify and address socio-cultural barriers against school enrollment, especially to the girl child, establish a monitoring and evaluation mechanism, as well as lobby for improved funding to schools. Though each of the traditional ruler is expected to develop strategies that best suit his area of jurisdiction in implementing the dictates of the document, the Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence Saad Abubakar III, put forward a model which he says can be effective. Wherever the Almighty School is in any village, build another structure around that so as they finish their Karatu at the Almighty School, they come out and learn A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you do not take them away from their uh, Islamia school, but you also give them modern education. Uh, at the same time. The Emir of Argungu, Somail Muhammad Mera, UNICEF and its partners have been instrumental to organizing the conference. 
Traditional rulers in northern Nigeria have played key roles in the successes of child immunization, and that influence is what UNICEF and its partners expect the traditional rulers to bring to bear. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. It is estimated that more than 100 million illegal arms and light weapons are in circulation in Africa, with West Africa accounting for 70% leading to increased conflicts in the region. This was made known during the inauguration of Multinational Small Arms and Ammunition Group course holding at Jaji Kaduna. Ibrahim Belagunda reports. The pilot course, which has participants drawn from West African countries, is founded by the Republic of Germany and organized by ECOWAS Commission in collaboration with the federal government of Nigeria. The training intends to raise awareness in the field of physical security and stockpile management of government small arms, light weapons and conventional ammunition. We want to bring about a pool of experts all across the ECOWAS region that could actually tackle that scourge. The Commandant International Leadership and Peacekeeping Center, Jaji, Major General Usman Shehuya Akubu said the officers will be trained on stockpile management competence and are expected to train others to block all leakages of small arms and light weapons in government possession. There were contributions by representatives of ECOWAS Commission and other stakeholders. There are a lot of challenges around the official stockpiles. That is why <coughs> this uh, capacity building intervention is made to be able to get our officers up to date in terms of the modern methods of you know, managing their regular stockpiles. The course is going to set pace of further measures to be taken aimed at addressing the challenges of small arms and light weapons in circulation. In Kaduna, Ibrahim Bellagunda, NTA News. Early presentation of eye-related cases for medication has been identified as a major step towards the prevention of cancer of the eye. This came to the fore during a free eye treatment organized by the National Eye Center, Kaduna, in commemoration of the World Sight Day. Haman Jabani has the details. Sight disorder is a common health challenge in Nigeria and many ignore its signs and symptoms, especially at the early stage. Retinoblastoma, which is cancer of the eye, is one of such causes of sight disorder. Experts say children between three months to three years are more vulnerable to the disease, which affects at least one in 20,000 births in Nigeria, with heredity accounting for about 40%. The cancer of the eye that occurs in children, it is curable, it is very rare and is a deadly blinding disease, just like other cancers that we know. National Eye Center Kaduna has organized a free eye treatment to mark the World Sight Day. 500 people are expected to benefit. We don't need to refer people who have retinal problem anymore. We're able to deal with them, people who have detachment, people who have problems, complications of uh, diabetes, mellitus. So we're moving ahead. There's still room for expansion and for improvement. Once the plan comes in an advanced stage, of course other things will come in. And government is doing everything possible to procure the relevant machines. Wrong diagnosis by health workers, late presentation of cases, and high cost of treatment are among major challenges to the treatment of eye diseases. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. And that is the size of our contribution from Kaduna Fatai in our Ibadan Network Center. A standing by for more reports. Thank you, Suleiman, and a warm welcome to the cradle. The only of Ife, Obade Yogusi Ojaja II, has tells Yoruba race to remain united, pursue peace, and relate in love with one another for the region to retain its enviable position among other regions in the country. The monarch stated is at a workshop organized by the Yoruba Unity Forum at the Kenya residence of Awolowo in Ogun State. Correspondent Yemi Dalemo has more. The meeting, which was attended by traditional rulers in Yoruba land, including the Uluba of Bado land, was chaired by Oni of Fife, Oba Adeyeyi Enito Ogunusi, addressing the gathering of Ogunusi, the Yoruba nation, to continue living in peace and show love and respect for one another for the region to regain its pride. What we're doing here is to maintain that dignity. 
that power truly belongs to the people. And our leaders, it's about time for them to always make themselves available to the people they are leading. Speaking on the theme of the workshop, State of the Nation, Yoruba, where are we? Professor Banji Akintoye said, Yoruba race will enjoy more development and progress when its people are more determined to defend their dignity, culture, and protect interests of the race at all costs. Senator Femi Okurumu, Dr. Tukumba Awolo Odosumu, and Mr. Yinka Odomaki, who spoke on the need for Yoruba unity in confronting 2019 challenges and consensus on restructuring and its prospects, said there is the need for restructuring, saying Yoruba is united to support leaders, representatives of the President General of the Ohanese Indigo, Eze Okon Emeniki, said the zone is also in agreement with the Yoruba leaders in the task of moving the zone forward. The meeting, however, called on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to remain impartial and neutral during the coming 2019 general elections. Yemi Dalimo, NT News. Moving on, ahead of Ember Month's campaign by the Federal Road Safety Corps, involvement of stakeholders in road safety education has been recommended for effective road traffic crash prevention in Nigeria. This was the outcome of a quarterly retreat of FRSC, or your state command, held in Ogumosho. Dayo Ogumoshola reports. Officers and men of the Federal Road Safety Corps in your state confide alongside other stakeholders on the campus of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Ogumosho, to brainstorm on how to enhance sustainable positive road safety practices through professionalism. In their separate remarks, Dignitaries at the occasion observed that road safety is a global issue which must encourage integrated approach aimed at achieving significant reduction in the level of crashes on the road. Ojo State Sector Commander of the Corps, Cecilia Alao, said the theme of the retreat was chosen to refresh and equip men and officers on the road. If we equip ourselves, then we'll be able to achieve that goal that we have set to our, of ourselves. There were good win messages from sister agencies of government and other stakeholders. Participants spoke on their expectations. The expectations on this retreat is just to empower more of the staff so that we'll be able to deliver the products and the services of the Corps in a professional way. Communicate that will enhance the operation of the Corps is expected at the end of the retreat. In Ogumosho, Dayo Ogumoshola, NTA News. In another development, the federal government says efforts to ease land registration remains a top priority for effective land administration in Nigeria. This was the fallout of a regional training workshop by African Regional Institute for Geospatial Information Science and Technology held at Ileife, Oshun State. Correspondent Guke Alomage has details. The workshop, which attracted participants from African countries, dwelt extensively on the need to embrace modern technology in land registration and management. The conference, titled Cost-Effective Approaches to Land Registration in Africa, was described as a timely intervention for capacity building in land administration. Participants agreed that effective policies and adoption of modern trend of technology will go a long way to address some of the challenges in land registration. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has approved the acquisition and we have procured several platforms including the unmanned aerial systems. What we need to do is to improve on the policy and institutional arrangement. The idea is to train people on how to cheaply or easily register land. The workshop applauded efforts at reducing poverty in Africa through effective land management. Koki Alamagi, NTN News. That's our contribution from Ibadan. We now return to Abuja for more stories on Nationwide. Thank you very much and welcome to Abuja. You are watching NTA Nationwide. Time to take some messages. The news continues after. Do stay with NTA. And with a sports update, we come to the end at, of NTA Nationwide. Thanks for watching. I am Jumbo Yusuf. Thank <laughs> you.